In an ideal world, you'd be using a color accurate, color calibrated monitor to do all your color grading work. But if you're not, or even if you are, scopes in DaVinci Resolve give you so much information about the image that you're color grading that you really need to know about them. I'm gonna show you the two main scopes I think you need to get started with to help you make better looking color grades. To access the scopes, click this button here, and then use this drop down to choose which kind of scope you want to use. Out of the box, DaVinci Resolve comes with the Parade, the Waveform, the Vector Scope, the Histogram, and this Chromacity Chart. In this video, we're going to be looking at both the Waveform and the Vector Scope. So I'm going to choose Waveform. The Waveform Scope is primarily aimed at giving you information about the brightness levels of your image. If you want to see a bigger scope, click this button here to pop it out. You can then move this window around however you want. And if you want to, you can click these buttons to see multiple scopes at the same time. We'll just start off with a single scope. This is the waveform. At the bottom, this waveform graph shows you a value of zero. This represents complete black. At the top, the value of 100 represents complete white. And all of the values between these two values represent all of the different lightness levels. Most of these scopes have additional options that you can set, and you can access these by clicking this button. For this waveform, we can colorize the waveform. If I turn this off, it's just white. And this is helpful if you purely want to focus on the bright and dark information in the image. If you turn this on, it's also going to show you an idea of the colors making up those areas of the image in the bright and dark areas. I'm going to turn this off for now just to keep things simple. Currently this waveform is set to Y. That means it's showing us only the luminance or the brightness information. We've got a couple of other options here but most of the time you're going to be working with the luminance information and you might choose to colorize it if you want. You can use this slider option to alter the brightness. This is not changing the image itself, it's just changing how bright that scope seems on the screen. So if you're color grading in a really dark or really bright environment, you might want to change that. And this option changes the brightness of the lines overlaid on the graph. Don't worry about these other options for now. If I scroll through the clip, you're gonna see this scope change. You see, as I move my head, this area is changing. On the left of this scope represents the left side of the image, and on the right of this scope represents the right of the image. This section in the middle where this bit moving is my head. And you can see that lines up roughly to the middle of the frame and to the middle of the scope. The waveform scope is super useful to get an idea of where the information in terms of brightness is sitting in your image. If you've got a really thin bar, that means that most of the brightness levels are the same. And if you've got wide areas, that means you've got more contrast in the image or more difference between the brightest and darkest parts. To demonstrate this, I'm going to just alter the contrast of this image and watch what happens in the scope. You can see how it all bunches up and collapses up and gets narrower. That means we've got less of a difference between the dark and bright areas of the image. And you can see here, this is reflected in the image itself. It's very low contrast. If I double click that to reset and then increase the contrast, it spreads out. The distance between the dark and light areas increases. And you can see in the image, it's looking pretty terrible now. If we adjust the exposure by changing the offset, make it darker, you can see that all of this part of the waveform is going down, representing that the image is getting darker. And if we go the other way and brighten up the image, all of these lines move upwards, showing us that the image has more information in the brighter parts. And if you go too much, you can see these areas are really bunching up now against the 100 line, meaning that we've got a lot of overexposed or over brightened information. And if I keep going, we just end up with a single white line at the top. So I'll just reset that. One really useful option that applies to all of these scopes is to click these three dots and turn on this display qualifier focus option. I'm gonna click that. And now if I click this, you can see it's ticked. Make sure in the viewer that you've got qualifier turned on, which I have. And now when I hover over the image with this little dropper, you can see in the scope, we get the circle. And this circle is telling us where on the image our mouse is pointed. If I go all the way over to the left of the image, you can see that the point under this little eyedropper is about 70 in terms of brightness. And if I move it across here over my hair, you can see it's very, very dark here in a lot of shadow. So that's really useful if you want to just pinpoint areas of an image and see what's going on. Okay, let's move on to the second essential scope. We're gonna come up here, click this drop down, and change this to vector scope. 
The vector scope is all about visualizing the color information in your image. Let's open up the options for the vector scope. There's a few different options here, but one of the most important ones is to turn on this show skin tone indicator. Watch what happens here when I click this, we get this extra line. This extra line is known as the skin tone line and it's where most people's skin tones fall, regardless of the actual color of the skin. That's because all skin has red blood flowing underneath it and that's why this line is focused slightly towards the red. You can increase the brightness of these things. Let's make it easier to see on this demo. Each of these little squares represents a color. We've got red, magenta, blue, cyan, green, and yellow. And the vector scope shows us what colors the image has in it and which colors are leaning towards one area or another. What I'm gonna do is grab the offset color dot and if I move this dot up towards the red, so we make the image more red, watch what happens in the vector scope. You can see this whole clump is moving up towards that R, the red point, and you can see in the image that the image is turning very red. If I drag this more to the yellow in the offset, you can see the vector scope is moving to the yellow, and so on. If we wanna make the image very magenta, we can move it up here like that. I'll just reset that. So the vector scope really allows you to see where the colors are in your image, and it also allows you to see how those colors are balanced or maybe not balanced. At the minute, you can see that the colors are moving more towards the reds and yellows and also towards the cyans and blues. That means we've got a lot of color contrast in terms of the different colors. If I just move the offset all the way over to magenta, now we don't have much color contrast. Everything's kind of in the magenta. So let's move that back. If I move this line all the way down here, scope is now telling us that almost all of the color information is in the cyan and blue region. We don't have much red or much yellow or much magenta or much green. Though we do have this little trace of green in this area here pointing towards green. I'll just reset that. And remember that we turned on this display qualifier focus. That means I can hover over this image and the vector scope is going to show me where the colors are for that point in the image. So obviously the blue sky, if I hover over that, we're getting this spot between the blue and cyan. And if I hover over these green or yellow bits, you can see that that's what this area of the image is, tending towards yellow. And if I hover over my face, you can see we're tending towards the reds there. And these highlights on my face are sitting actually bang on the skin tone line there. So what we can take from this is that we might want to look at moving some of those colors in the red area more towards the skin tone line. And there's loads of ways we can do this. For example, if I just move the offset dot a little bit this way, and hover over the face again, we should be getting a bit closer to the skin tone line now. And if I do it a bit too much and hover over it, now we're kind of tending towards the yellow too much. So this skin tone line is super useful. There's a more advanced technique and actually an easier technique for this, getting skin tones correct, which I'll cover in a future video. There's no point knowing about scopes if you're not gonna use them in conjunction with color grade changes that you're making. Watch this video next to learn two ways to change the exposure or the brightness of your image along with using the waveform scope. I'm Jason Roberts, this is DaVinci Dojo. Please subscribe, hopefully I'll see you in the next one.